Hi, I'm Andy Jones, your host for Art Talk. If you have any desire whatsoever to learn how to paint, I can teach you how to do it. I've literally taught thousands of people how to paint. On this edition of Art Talk, we are going to be painting this um, kind of sad uh, black and white cow on an eight by eight canvas. And my cow would be less sad knowing that uh, Stephen White is joining me here in the studio today. So good afternoon, Stephen. Hey, I was gonna ask why is he sad? I don't know. Maybe it's just because he's the only cow in the painting. Okay. Probably should have painted some cow friends for him. I read that cows do have best friends. So maybe that's what he's missing. I hadn't ever thought about a cow having a best friend. This thing also, this fact sheet I read said that cows hold grudges and it gave no context. So I don't know oh, the I'm, accuracy. I'm sure that there's probably some angry cow out there. We'll, we'll worry about angry cows and uh, uh, cow's milk cheeses later on that could be made from angry cows. Okay. But what I want to show folks right now is kind of my painting setup. So I have a little wooden board here that is uh, a little bigger than my canvas. And I have a canvas panel that I've made some loops of tape and I've adhered that down. So I have like a little handheld easel to work with. And then I've taken my downloadable pattern and the link for the downloadable design is in the description below. So print that out and I've got a couple of pieces of tape positioning that on my canvas. And I would use some gray artist transfer paper. And this is artist graphite paper. It is not carbon paper. Uh, so the kind of carbon paper that you used to use, Stephen doesn't even know that this existed to make multiple copies on a typewriter will make a huge mess. What's the typewriter? Okay, Stephen, that was just a smart comment from the peanut gallery. But you would slip your uh, artist graphite paper between your design and the canvas and then uh, trace over your design lines so that you transfer your design onto your canvas. So that's where we are right here. And we'll just magically get all of that stuff out of the way. And we are now ready to start painting. Are there a lot of angry cows out there, Stephen, or is it just a few? I would hope there's just a few. I hope the cows don't have too much to be angry about, you know? Well, I, mean, I mean, they are just literally standing around eating grass all day. Well, I think they're content with that. That's probably what they like prefer to be doing, you know? Probably. And of course, you know, they've got four stomachs. That's crazy. We're going to start painting our background behind our cow. And it's basically this top section and then the area below the cow's ear and next to I guess it's a she next to her face. So I'm gonna start with a big one inch flat brush and some burnt sienna. And I'm gonna add a little bit of black and some apple red to this cause we're kind of making a burgundy color. And we are literally just going to paint our background. You can come right up next to your design line, but make sure that you don't lose that. You want to keep the shape kind of where you can see it and if you, start to run shy of paint, go ahead and pick up some more. And we are going to just kind of lop off the top of her head there so that, so that we can make that uh, a little uh, fluffier. Okay. I have a, That's a good reason. Yes, I have a thing for animals with fluffy heads. My personal house cow has a very soft and fluffy head. I was going to say, you practically have a cow in your house. I do. There is, uh, talking about cows in the house, there's a a video clip on the internet and it, you could tell it's this guy who's walking up to his house and he is really unhappy and he's like Bobo not in the house Bobo and finally when he gets in the house there is a full-size buffalo standing in the house we, we've talked about buffalo a little bit here on this show uh, unfortunately we have and I'm sure that Stephen is going back to the archives to uh, right. Any excuse I have to show that Photoshop I made of you as a buffalo. Yes. Um, I can't wait for everyone to see that again. Okay. So our background is nicely uh, dark burgundy, and we are going to put out a little bit of 
yellow ochre on our palette. And we are going to use a very, very small amount of yellow ochre. And I've got a one inch flat brush. I'm just going to pick up a very small amount of yellow ochre. And you can see there's almost no paint on my brush. All right, and so what I'm going to do is we're going to do a little pattern in the background. And so I'm going to just take my brush and touch this yellow ochre and I've kind of made a little diagonal line there. And we're going to do, we're going to skip down and we're going to do another little diagonal line. And we're doing this just by tapping our almost dry brush on the canvas. This is going to make almost like an argyle pattern, which I know was one of Stephen's favorite patterns. It's one of my favorite bands. The Argyles? Argyle pattern. Oh, okay. That's not true. I just said that. Okay. <laughs> I, I, you could leave this in because it doesn't really matter. But I would have thought that you might have known a band uh, with that name. It's kind of a little diamond pattern here in the background. And it does not need to be uh, even or perfect by any stretch of the imagination. So that's kind of what we've got going on right now. And I'm going to make a purplish gray color by putting some titanium white, some dioxazine purple out on my palette. And we're gonna grab our palette knife and we're going to mix a nice purpley gray color. So I'm gonna start with some white and I'm gonna add some dioxazine purple to this. All right, so we've got a little purpley color going on here and we're gonna add a little bit of black. Don't go overboard with the black, it's easier to add some additional black, but once you put too much in there, it is impossible to take it back out. All right, so let's check this color against uh, the painting that we already did. And this color is a little bit duller, but I think it's gonna be okay. If I put this on and it seems like it needs to be a little bit more intense, we can come back and add a little bit more. But I'm going to take a, a flat brush and pick up a little bit of this purple gray color. And I do not want much paint on the brush. It looks like I'm picking up a lot of paint, but I really have almost no paint on the brush. Stephen, be my witness. There's almost no paint on that brush. Witnessed. Okay. So now having it witnessed, we are going to lay our brush parallel to the surface of the canvas. And we are going to just drag on the smallest bit of paint. And you can see that it clings to the weave of the canvas. And I am going back over this and I'm not getting a ton of coverage. Why? Because there wasn't much paint on the brush. Oh. So we're gonna to continue to apply this purple gray color to the background. And we're even going to apply it down here in this area as well. Then I'm gonna go in one direction and then pick up a very slight amount of paint and I'm going to turn the canvas and go maybe in another direction, maybe just vertically this time. And you could see that I'm going over this and there's very little paint that's coming off of the brush. If you start and it looks like you have too much paint on your brush, immediately stop what you're doing and wipe some of that paint off of your brush. This is where you don't want too much paint. Okay, I just looked at the painting here and this one here. And I think I want to make this color a little bit more purple or violet. So I'm going to pick up a small amount of dioxazine purple and just kind of brush mix that in right here on my palette. And then I'm going to brush some of that on the canvas. And it's going to brighten up the painting, but we're not doing it all over. We're gonna do it in some strategic locations. And by that, I mean, I'm just gonna pick a couple of areas and put some on there. Just make sure that you leave well enough alone at some point. Well, thank you, Stephen, for that. And I will try to take your advice. We're back to our cow painting and we've got this nice uh, violet color on there. And the complement to violet is yellow on the traditional primary color wheel. So we're gonna add an area of um, 
yellow to our background. So in addition to the yellow ochre that's on my palette, I'm going to put out a little medium yellow. Andy, I'm going to ask a question that I, I think you already were going to address. What, what, is, what is this yellow that we're painting? What is, what is it? It's one of those things, Stephen, that I don't know what it is. It is just magical background color. That's the best way to think about it. No objective? It's just but we're not add, trying to represent any. We're not representing anything. Um, we're not representing cheese. We're not representing wheat. Uh, hey, none of that stuff. None it's, of those cow things. None of, none of the cow assorted things. Uh, it's just a color uh, that we're adding uh, to complement our purple in our background. So I'm picking up a small amount of yellow ochre on my one inch flat brush, and I'm going to turn my painting. And what I'm going to do is just start tapping some of this yellow ochre on. And I'm going to pick up a little bit more. Definitely don't want much paint on your brush, but you need to have enough so that you can leave some on your canvas. And I'm just literally tapping the canvas and putting on some what would be vertical lines of yellow ochre. And this is setting the stage for some of my brighter colors to come. Sometimes when you're doing a painting, you simply need to add some color. And one easy way to do that is simply to add it into the background. And that's what we're doing here. And some of these little areas are longer than others. You don't want them the same distance apart or the same length. You want to have some variety in your uh, color or in your background color. Um, that's what I would like to call it now, background color. All right, so without stopping, we're going to simply wipe our brush of the excess yellow ochre, and I'm going to pick up some medium yellow. And every time you do something like this, your painting is going to be a little different than the time before. So in the same general area, I'm going to start right next to the cow's head and I'm putting some medium yellow on, and you can see that this is much, much brighter than the yellow ochre. Now, Stephen, you and I both come from rural areas. Unfortunately. Well, I mean, we've, we made it out. <laughs> we've left we've the- We've made it out the farm. We've made it out of the farm and into the big city, so uh, congratulations to you for that. Likewise. Um, so did you have occasion to run into livestock in your formative years? Yeah, I had a friend whose family had a farm and his dad would pay us to go like pick peas and stuff. Uh, they also had cattle and cows. There's a difference. I don't know if you knew that. Not all cows are cattle. But are all cattle cows? Actually, don't know. I don't, I don't know the rest <laughs> of that. I just, it's one of those things. Your I read. big hat, no cattle. I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so they had cows and this was the first time i had like gotten up close with a cow and they're massive they're huge they're they're way bigger than they look from the side of the road uh when you're on a road trip and you see them um <laughs> they are they're indeed. they're giant tanks but they're also like big babies you know like they're ta they're giant tank puppies yes and they are um i learned that they are inherently lazy Yes. If you are calling the cows from the pasture to come for a feeding, they will always take the route that has the least amount of hills to go up. Have you seen those videos of people playing the French horn on the side of the road and like something about the French horn like summons cows? I mean, I'm not a cow, but I would like if somebody were playing the French if horn. If somebody were standing outside of your house playing the French horn, you'd I probably would go look. You would probably go look. You know, and, this makes and, sense. And see, you know, see what's going on out there. We are applying some sunny yellow, and we're going to do just a little bit of this here and there. And then we're going to come back, and it's now we're going to go ahead and do it. We're going to add some titanium white to our sunny yellow. Go ahead and do it. And we are. All gas, no brakes on this cow train. <laughs> Where to break? Where to break? So we're going to put some of this lighter yellow on, and we're kind of creating a brighter area that kind of moves through the center of this little um, yellowy, streaky area. So I'm going to turn this back around so that I can 
look at it right side up and that is looking really good. And we are going to continue on. We are adding some pure orange to our uh, palette and I'm gonna add a little medium yellow into my pure orange, making a yellow orange color. All right, and over here toward this edge of the canvas, we're going to add some of this impure orange, or this dirty orange. So Stephen, have you, I know that most people don't ride cows, but you, you know, we're talking about friends with cattle and things like that. Have you ever ridden a horse? Yeah. So my it, horse riding. Was it good or bad? It was, um, oh, it was good. Nothing happened really, but I, my sister rides horses and I was visiting her and I was very young and she let me ride her horse. Um, one of her horses and you know she like had me like in the horse on a lead and was just sort of telling me around the the, the paddock is that what it is um i think Whatever. fancy people have a paddock the yes. horse the horse yard the and, horse yes and uh she got me on there and she said oh hang on i forgot something in the house let me go get it that's never a good and sign and then she said just don't squeeze your legs because that'll make the horse go and uh -huh. so i sat there for what felt like an hour. Uh huh. It was probably like less than five minutes. Did probably. you squeeze your legs together? No, I like held them as far apart as I could, if anything. And I'm just sitting here on this horse who's just standing there, like waiting to do just something. Chilling. And anytime yeah. it like flinched or like whipped its tail, I like fear. Yes. You know? Yeah. All right. So I've got some yellow ochre and medium yellow on my brush, and I added a little too much orange. So we're just going to tap over that and make some of that orange less orangey. Okay, I'm going to dry this, and then when we come back, I've got another interesting riding animal story for you, Stephen. I'd like to take a minute to thank Plaid Enterprises for sponsoring Art Talk. They are the makers of Folk Art Acrylics, which I absolutely love using. I've used this paint since I was a young tot, and now that I'm an old fart, I still use this paint. We have a 17-piece set that we've curated just for you. Ordering information is in the description below, and we also have great brushes for you. We have a seven-piece set of Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brushes. These are absolutely incredible. I use them every time I paint. <laughs> and I've never done that in my entire life. Now, let's get back to our video. Okay, we have our background uh, pretty much complete and dry at this point. And now we're gonna actually start to work on the cow. And I'm going to give us a little friend here while we're painting. And we're gonna start by painting in our cow's eyes. And we're gonna use uh, pure black, and I'm using a little number eight flat brush. And I'm just going to base coat in the cow's eyes with black. Promised Stephen another little riding animals stories. So when I was in college, I was lucky enough to study abroad. And at the end of our study abroad time, I was given word from my mother that I was to make my way back home right then. But my good friends were going to do a little post-school traveling, and I thought that sounded a lot more fun than going home. So we thought it would be fun to go to Russia, but it was the Soviet Union had not fallen then, and it was still uh, communist country and fairly difficult to just show up at the airport and go to Russia. Yeah, I was okay. I was confused. I was like, where were you living? I was living in Italy. Okay, got you. All right. So then we concocted a much better plan. So we were going to take the ferry from Italy to Greece and kind of hang out in Athens um, for a little while and see the Acropolis and, you know, do the touristy stuff there. And then we were going to go to Egypt. We made a plan and we were going to Egypt and we got there. 
And there's a whole much longer story about getting there and the problems that a bunch of inexperienced college kids had traveling the way we did, basically with just, you know, a softback book that we had bought the day before we left the U.S. Then the brilliant tour guide that I am had planned that we would ride camels from Giza, I mean, from Saqqara to Giza. And in my little paperback travel guide, it looked like it was about a half an inch. So what trouble could that be? So Stephen, we got on camels. And I will just tell you, getting on a camel is an experience unto itself. My friend Jim is in the camel in the front of our group. And then my friend Lisa is in, on the camel in front of me. And they put my camel's leash that's got a ring in its nose. So that ring in its nose on a rope goes to her camel's saddle. And we start off across the desert. And everything's going great until my camel, for some unknown reason, decides to bite her camel in the butt. Uh -oh. Which makes her camel start running across the desert, dragging my camel in tow. And just like the runaway horse thing, you're praying that somebody on a camel is going to see two tourists yelling their heads off as we are crossing the desert sands. And it took a while, but somebody did stop our camels. And then my friend turns around and is yelling at me for not controlling my camel, for biting her camel. And this I'm like, camel you just met. The camel I had just met, yes. And we did, we did make it to the pyramids and amazing. Uh, you no, know, it's just, I mean, stunning how big those pyramids were. And then we ran back into our little um, camel guys who were telling us it was time that we needed to head back. <laughs> and my friend Jim looked at me and he goes, are you about to get back on a camel? And I said, no, sir. So we left him and his four camels there at the pyramids. And we took a cab back to the Sheraton Hotel. We were not staying there, but it had an air-conditioned lobby. And that was our most important thing. All right, so eyes black, inside of ears black, big old cow nose black. And I'm going to go ahead and start... But I mean, this is a little number eight flat and I need a little bit bigger brush uh, for this area over here, which is kind of the side of our cow. All right, so we're now just going to kind of paint this whole area underneath the cow's ear. And you can see that I'm leaving kind of a little cheat area right there so I can tell where the bottom of the ear is. I've got most all of my solid black areas of my cow undercoated and we're gonna take a quick break and dry this paint. We are back in the USA and back to our uh, cow painting. So we're gonna begin to develop this kind of light uh, uh, highlight on the side of our cow. And I'm going to do that. Let's go ahead and put out a little um, ultramarine blue on our palette. All right, so I've picked up, just wiped the um, black out of my brush and picked up some ultramarine blue. And what I'm going to do is start right underneath the cow's ear and just kind of curving down. I'm just seesawing back and forth in a curved motion to lay the foundation for this little highlight that's going on the side of our cow. We're just kind of scrubbing on a little bit of blue, and then I'm gonna wipe this out of my brush, and I'm going to pick up a little bit more of this blue color and a little titanium white. And now we've got kind of a blue-gray color, and we're gonna stand the brush up on the uh, chisel edge, and we are just going to kind of scissor back and forth. All right, so we now have our little highlight built up here on the side of our cow. 
And I think I'm going to begin to just kind of play around in the on the cow's face, putting a little bit of a shadow area on there. So I'm just going to dip my brush in water and see what's on there. And I've got kind of a blackish gray color with a little blue in it. So let's make that not quite so harsh by adding some titanium white to this. And let's add a little bit of shadowing here on the left hand side of her face. And this does come out right around her nose. And we're just gonna just add a little bit of shading on here so that we can add our white highlights to her face and they've got somewhere to show up. All right, so right in the center of her forehead, she's got a nice cowlick going on there, kind of in early punk rock days. And then we'll carry some of this over to the top right hand side of her head and we'll bring a little bit of it in above her right eye and we'll bring some right below her eye but we've got a little bit of a lighter area just above her eyeball and we can change any or all of this as we add the light highlights to her face I'll move these brushes out of the way so i can rinse my brush out again and just blot some of the excess um, color off and now with this damp brush I can move some of this paint that's not quite dry yet and we're just having fun now we're just kind of smearing this around softening the edges or the harsh lines we don't really want any terribly harsh lines on her face okay so you could see that we've just kind of modeled or muddled uh, some gray coloring on the cows face and now I've picked up my number 12 flat brush and some titanium white and I'm going to pick up a little bit of some of my pure black and ultramarine blue on the brush just want to give a little color here so that our cow's face is not completely white at this point because we need to have a darker color underneath so we can layer white on top so we're going to start and we're just going to kind of paint our cow's face in with this. And you can see that I'm leaving some of this darker shading there. And I want to make sure that we're not going too light with this. This is going to have to be the Goldilocks of pale grays. Can't be too dark, can't be too light, and have to be just right. And we're just going to brush this on and kind of filling in her face. All right, so you can see I'm just applying this color and her face is not white anymore. It's kind of a light gray, but you can still see some of that gray shading that we've put on. All right, now I'm going to uh, just kind of let that sit for just a second while I'm wiping out my brush. Don't want to clean it out but I uh, want to wipe it out and that's of course not going to dry fast enough so we're going to give it a quick dry and then come back and start layering our white on top. We have dried our little cow's face and she is ready to go but we're going to work on her ears next. So I'm going to pick up a little yellow ochre and I'm going to paint kind of the top of her ears as they roll over Now, Stephen, when you were up close and personal with your cows, did you notice how big their ears are? Yeah, they're quite large. They are, and they have to be because they have to swat flies off of their cows' faces. Because that's a sad reality of cows' lives is they've got to deal with the flies. But, you know, there are some cows in some places that live a really, really plush life, and they don't all live outside. Um, there are some Amish which uh, keep their cows, you know, in their beautifully uh, maintained barns, 
and the cows are below the house so that some of the heat from the animals will rise up and help warm the house during the winter. Have you seen those highland cows that have like bangs and like really long hair? Yes, I'm very jealous of those cows. Thank those you, Those cows Stephen. are awesome. All right. We have uh, just painted some yellow ochre on the top of our cow's ears, and I'm going to give that a super quick dry. We're going to take our filbert brush, and this is a number 10 filbert, and a filbert is like a flat brush, but it's rounded at the end, so it doesn't have any corners. And what we're going to do is use this to stroke on some of the fur on our cow's ears so that we hopefully get some nice kind of little fluffy markings going on. I'm going to start over here on her uh, left ear, and I'm going to start right at the center, and I'm going to sweep out and then drag some of this down. And you see just how quickly you can get, and I'm not sure where I'm showing this. There you go. You can see how you get this little bit of hair just coming down over the uh, black that we painted on a little earlier. So stand the brush up and just sweep some of these little hairs on. So some people say, why don't you, you why don't you use your liner brush to do that? Why don't you use your liner brush to do that? Thank you, some people. Um, I think it's just easier to get a nice indication of fur using the uh, filbert brush, and then you're not trying to paint a bunch of individual hairs. You just give the uh, you give enough information that this is kind of furry cow ear, and that's all you have to do. All right, so let's come back to her beautiful face now, and we are going to put some white on her nose, and this is going to probably be the brightest, whitest part of her face. And you can see how much whiter it is than the gray that's on either side of that. And we're going to kind of establish this little highlighted area on her face and then let that white just trail off over there. And we'll bring some of it around her nose over on this side of her face. And I'm just tapping and patting a little bit of that light color on. And then we'll add less white back in this more shaded area of her face. So where I've got more white, I'll just tap where the whiter part of her face is. And then as I've cleaned some of that color off my brush, I can move over into the more shadowed areas. All right, so we're just patting some of this on and cows don't have uh well as Stephen mentioned the uh, highland cows they do have longer hair and bangs and whatnot but this little texas gal here and does not have really long fur on her face so we're just tapping and patting on some color some white indicating that she has white fur on her face all right, let's give her a little bit of a hairdo up here. And we're going to take our uh, filbert brush, and I'm going to give her a big swoop or two, just kind of at the top of her head, showing off her cowlick, as it were. Boom, boom. I'm here all week, Stephen. All right, so let's give her some little eyelashes hanging down over her eye. Because now, I'll tell you one thing, cows do have some lashes. And we're going to come put some darker shadow on the top of that, but we're just getting some glamour length lashes on her right now. Okay, and she can look a little sad. That's okay with me. But I want to take uh, a liner brush and quickly give her some highlights in her eyes so that they don't look hollow. All right, so we're going to put a little highlight here in her eye. And we're going to put another highlight over here in this eye. And remember, I'm not sure if you've remembered it from other art talks, you want to make sure that when you're painting an animal, you make sure that the highlight in their eye is not a very small pin dot of white. If you make the highlight in their eyes too small, 
they will look incredibly mean and shifty. All right, now she's going to have a bit of a cowlick in the center of her head. So let's put out a little bit of aqua on our palette. And we're doing that just for fun, just to give a little bit of a different color to uh, some of this accenting that's going to go on. So ultramarine blue, aqua, and some white. And I know, Stephen, this is usually what you accent your cows with, isn't it? Oh, all the time. <laughs> Every, uh, Every yeah, cow that you painted. Standard. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're going to brush a little bit of that on. And you can see that just really does make her start to look very pretty and very special. So we're going to put a little bit here in the center of her forehead. And we're going to kind of make it like a little abstract starburst. And chances are, just like me, you're going to get that a little bit overdone. And we're going to come back and soften that. But let's get a little, you know, a little color up there in her hair, the top of her head. And we'll put some above her eye here. And this is, it's kind of fun just to play with tapping on some of this blue accent. I can take some more of this aqua color and a little white. And we can accent over here on this highlight on the side. All right, so I've got some yellow ochre and black kind of thinned out in my brush. And I'm tapping this on, this really thinned out color. And I'm just going to be kind of messing with her face here just adding a little bit of extra color, and I can soften it with my finger. I can add some of this dark to her cowlick on her face, and as I said, we're going to come back over this and add white on top, so don't think that that's it. I'm just softening up this little cowlick here, and it's kind of softening here and there. All right, now I'm going to come back down to the little cow's chin and the mouth area. And I'm gonna take some yellow ochre and I'm gonna turn this upside down so that I can paint this a little more easily. I'm gonna start with yellow ochre to the bottom of her chin. And then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black and I'm just putting black on part of the brush and yellow ochre on the other part of the brush. Uh, we're going to shade under her mouth, giving her this sad cow mouth. And just going to push that down a little bit. And we're going to take more black and we're going to shade like right up under her little nose. And we're going to go ahead and paint this little bit of um, kind of a little golden area underneath her neck. All right, so we are going to now, uh, where I had left that little cheat line there, I've got a brush that is water on one side and black on the other side. And we're just going to shade right underneath that ear. And this is also going to put, it's going to fill in those little areas that are still kind of little white pin spots. And it's also going to shade the top of that little accent on the side of the cow. And we're going to fill in that little spot here and here. And we don't have very much further to go on our cow. All right, I'm just going to just take a little bit more of this dark shading and put some right underneath her chin there. We can put some underneath her nose, top of her mouth, and maybe a little bit to have her nose kind of shade up onto her face a little bit so we kind of lose some of that distinction there. There'll be some over here as well. This is kind of the hard part when you start playing to make uh, some of these areas look a little bit more subdued or less defined, I think might be a better way to say that. So again, a little ultramarine blue, a little aqua and a little white. I'm going to add 
some of these accents on the cow's nose. I am going to thin this down with some water so I don't want it to be too strong. So we're going to tap some of this on her face and I really do like how that color's looking. And we'll put a little bit over here kind of define the bottom of her nose. All right, so you see how we've kind of just tapped and dabbed some of that around her nose, and it's starting to look a little bit more like a cow nose, but I'm gonna take a little yellow ochre here and thin that down too. And we're gonna add a little dab of yellow ochre here and there. And this is transparent yellow ochre because we thinned it down. And I think that's looking pretty cool. We just have to be willing to play around a little bit at this point so that you can get some nice soft areas of color that kind of fade in and out. And I'm thinking she's looking pretty good. I do need to put some blue accents over on that area on her chest there. So let's take some of this ultramarine blue aqua and white mixture. And let's just add a little bit of an accent of that on there. We're looking pretty, pretty good. I do want to just take my number eight flat brush and some, have the brush damp and then pick up black on one half of the brush. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of softness right under her eye, just pat a little bit of that black right under the eye so that it kind of fades out from the eye onto the skin around the eye. Oh, that looked really nice there. Every now and then I do something that looks really good and I have to stop and make sure to let myself know that I liked what I just did. Okay, folks, I think we are just about done with her. And this is the point where I can play far too much. Just add a little dark above her eyelashes there. And if I don't stop, or if Stephen doesn't tell me it is time to wrap this up, I will keep going. And it's time to wrap this up. Okay, I will take that not so subtle in, Stephen. <laughs> All right, cowboys and cowgirls. This little cow is done. Thanks for watching this episode of Art Talk. We really want to hear what you have to say, so be sure to leave a comment below and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leaving us a comment is very important to us. And if you'd like to leave a compliment, you can email us at art underscore talk at platonline.com. Remember that the link to the downloadable pattern is in the description box below.